Fire Batista. I've been doing martial arts since I was four years old, uh, teaching martial arts since I was 14. Um, I took over my first, well, I took over this actual location when I was 22 or 23 years old. I am currently turning 32 this year. I've never had a real job. This is my life. I eat, breathe, and, you know, sleep this. So, my hands are up. I'm not gonna let my back foot go past this line. I go step, see where my foot went? Did it go up to the line or past it? It went up to the line. I go front kick and back. When I do it fast, Bobby, step, front around. kick, and back. I never go past my foot. Eyes on me, dragons. All the eyes up here, bud. We teach Shotokan Karate. Okay. You know, so Shotokan Karate is our thing. Uh, the kickboxing and boxing is more of my personal thing. Um, we have dabbled with the idea of throwing boxing or kickboxing into the classes for the kids. Um, but that's not what people come here for. Mm -hmm. People come here for karate classes. And if you come here for pizza and I give you a ham sandwich, you're gonna look at me and say, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we have adult kickboxing. Do I love kickboxing for our adults? But that's something totally different. It's like a fitness-based kickboxing program, which is amazing, yeah. but it's not the same as boxing or kickboxing with contact. Okay. Higher, go! I feel like in the very, very beginning, it was very difficult. Um, I never had a problem with members. I was always able to keep myself in check whenever I had to teach the kids or interact with any of the parents and the adults. Where I did find myself getting a little snippy and a little nasty was with my staff at points in time. Throughout, the, you know, I would have a quick little comebacks or short responses. Um, over time, as we've grown and as I've gotten a little more seasoned with that sort of stuff, I was able to handle it a lot better. I always like to think that we are better than everybody else, and that's what's helping us excel. Um, and there are times where we'll close the doors and maybe not market as much and just work on us as a team to make sure we're providing the best customer service as possible, making sure that we're teaching the tightest classes as possible. And once we have all of those things down and locked, open it back up, let the floodgates open up and we'll be a better version of ourselves when the new members come into the door. All right, so D stands for decisive. I stands for interactive, S stands for stabilizing, and C stands for controlling. Decisive means that you're gonna get right to action. You're not, you're not gonna stop. Uh, I stands for I wanna talk about it. You know, you wanna be very interactive, you wanna chat it up. S stands for I wanna make sure everyone feels good about it before we do anything. How do you feel? What do you think about this? What do you feel if we did this? You know, would you get upset? Would you be happy? Would you be sad? Uh, and C stands for what's the plan? There's not one personality style that's better than the other. Um, it's just making sure that they're all playing well with each other and playing people to their proper points. Like I was saying before, putting people in the right places on the bus, this is what I mean. This is how I figure out where's the right spot in the bus. If I have someone like me who is a high D, and I'm kind of a high I, but me being a high D, I may not be the best person to be chatting it up with everybody. You know what I mean? But if I have Faith who's a high I, I should be sticking her right at the front desk because I know she's not gonna have a problem talking to people as they're coming in the door. If I have Maria, who's a high C, who am I gonna give my paperwork to? That's why she's our office manager. Who am I gonna give our computer stuff to? Maria. I don't know if you guys ever read the book, The Five Languages of Love. I have, yeah. That's a good book. <laughs> it is. Good. So mine, my five languages, my two, my primary language is quality time and my secondary language is gifts of appreciation. Um, there is the five languages of appreciation in the workplace. Um, we have like a manager's book club, so the managers have to read a book every two or three months. Um, this is the book that we had two months ago. Um, and at the end of this book, you take a test on how you like to be appreciated. You have your primary and you have your secondary. Um, if you look, most people's primaries are the same. Words of affirmation, 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 but insofts is help with projects. So if I Tell Faith she's doing a good job, Rose she's doing a good job, uh, Shana she's doing a good job, Karina doing, she's doing a good job, but if I tell Insop, hey you're doing a good job, it's not gonna mean much to him. It's gonna fall on deaf ears. But if I say, hey Insop, you're doing such a great job, do you need help with anything? Can I help you with something? Can I take something off your plate? That's gonna be more to him, more to him than me telling him or praising him that he's doing a good job. Same deal with Kells. Me praising her may not have as much as an effect as me spending quality time with her, finding out how her day is, how she's doing in college, how she's doing with her grades in school, and then helping her with her projects. So when that's your primary, that's pretty much how you're going to interact with everybody else. Um, if my primary is words of affirmation, I'm gonna go right to words of affirmation whenever I wanna give somebody praise. I'm like, hey dude, that was awesome, kick ass, good job, keep work, you know, keep it up. Um, and I'll mesh well 
with everyone that has that, but I'm gonna clash with the people that don't. And I have to keep that in mind whenever I'm talking to my team, whenever I'm talking to my staff. Bring your feet together, hands stay up, hands stay up. This leg now, you're gonna front kick and put it back down next to your foot. I've, I have to say I've been very, very lucky with the teachers and coaches that I've had. All of my teachers and coaches have been able to do what they said that they can, what they said they wanted me to do. It's one thing to have a coach or a teacher, like you ever watch gymnastics and you have that guy that's telling the girl to do the 36 flips, meanwhile it doesn't look like he can walk down a flight of stairs, you know what I mean? Um, so all of my, my coaches and my, my teachers were able to do exactly what they want me to do, so, which was cool because I was learning by example, by following and doing it. Um, but they were also crazy persistent with what they want. They never let me do something wrong. If it was wrong, if, if I had to do it 57 times to fix it, they were gonna be on me 57 times. And if it was every other training session after that, they were gonna keep on me. Um, and I try to take that and bring that whether, you know, with, with regular class when I'm teaching the kids or when I'm training the staff. Um, keep doing it until it's right.